powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. As America waits for both financial and medical help, the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise and so do the deaths now topping 1000 across the nation. Tonight, Montana has 14 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, bringing our total to 67. Four of those cases right here in Yellowstone County, moving our total to 12. Wyoming is now reporting 49 cases. Nationwide, Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center reports 68,960 cases, resulting in 1,041 deaths. That is up more than 400 deaths in just the last 48 hours. Well, the Senate now has the votes and has passed the $2 trillion stimulus plan just moments ago as millions of Americans are sheltering at home with the nation's economy almost at a virtual standstill. Natalie Brand has the latest from the White House. Senators are trying to iron out final sticking points in a $2 trillion bipartisan bill aimed at saving the economy during the coronavirus crisis. Struggling Americans are going to go to their mailboxes and find four-figure checks to help with their bills. Why? Because the Senate stepped up. The vote delayed this evening by a last-minute snag as a handful of GOP senators raised concern about the increased unemployment funds and what it could mean for some workers in some states. The American people do not think you should get paid more money to not work than to work. I, I don't think it'll create incentives. Most Americans, what they want, they want to keep their jobs. The stimulus package negotiated with the White House includes a cash payment of up to $1,200 for most working Americans and $500 for children. It also expands unemployment insurance for an additional 13 weeks and boosts the benefits by $600 for up to four months. The plan also contains nearly $400 billion in loans and grants to small businesses to keep workers on the payroll. President Trump says once the legislation passes the Senate, then the House, he will sign it immediately. The president again talked today about possibly reopening sections of the country, but New York remains the U.S. epicenter. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the rate of growth in coronavirus hospitalizations has slowed somewhat, but he reiterated that a critical shortage of life-saving ventilators remains a major problem. As the death toll grows, a temporary morgue is being built in case the city's permanent morgues become full. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. By a 96 to nothing vote, the Senate did just pass that bill, a uh, unanimous vote. The president has said he would like to reopen the country for business by Easter, but will reevaluate when the national 15-day social distancing guidelines expire next week. Montana's two U.S. senators both voted yes for the $2 trillion economic rescue package. They say that massive bill is desperately needed to help Montana businesses, citizens, governments, and health care providers weather the coronavirus storm. Senator Tester, a Democrat, says he likes the fact that the bill now has increased aid for hospitals, state and local governments, and Native American tribes. He's disappointed, however, it still has what he calls a $500 billion slush fund to help selected businesses, but that it contains more controls on how that money is spent. And Senator Daines, a Republican, says the bill is a bold bipartisan stroke to address a public health and economic crisis. He pointed to its increase in unemployment benefits as 15,000 Montanans have filed for benefits in just the past eight days. The economic crisis and the, the panic that we see going on right now is not going to end until the pandemic ends, until we feel safe from this horrible virus and disease. The way we get immunity is through these amazing vaccines and these drugs. We're moving as fast as we can. It's an all-government approach working with industry, and we can get these to market as quickly as possible. Our goal right now as an office is to make sure that we're a conduit to make to make sure that we can direct people in the right direction to get the dollars that they desperately need. And if, in fact, we can make sure that those businesses can stick around, and that's what this bill is about for four months, it's absolutely going to help to hold those folks uh, in, 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 a, in a positive situation from a, from a monetary uh, standpoint to be able to, to come out of this alive. 
So that bill has passed the Senate and still has to go back to the House. Small business owners in the Billings area were able to teleconference today with top regional officials from the Small Business Administration. The topic, new emergency loans to help keep small businesses afloat as the coronavirus pandemic plays out. Q2's Jay Cohn joins us now with details on help that's on the way. Well, that's right. The stimulus package agreed to in Congress authorizes the SBA to issue what's called economic injury disaster loans, loans that would help keep small businesses in business. Now, keep in mind, this pot of money is the same money that the SBA uses to respond to natural disasters like floods and tornadoes. Daniel Nordberg, who is the Region 8 SBA director, told today's teleconference, this is the first time that Congress has authorized the use of this money to respond to a biological event. Now, we're told the stimulus bill includes some $367 billion for U.S. small businesses. Just no telling how much of that could eventually come to Montana. We do know it may take weeks for that money to start flowing. So Upsteps, Big Sky Economic Development here in Billings, they're now making bridge loans available to help local businesses in the short term. The SBA has uh, approved a disaster relief loan program. But as you make application to that program, it will be several weeks if you're a small business before you actually see funds. And during that gap, that gap could be six to eight weeks. You're still trying to cash flow. You're still trying to cover your expenses. And for some small businesses in our community, that gap can be devastating. So our board uh, approved the team at Big Sky to work on what we call a business stabilization loan program. That is an attempt to fill that gap. Arviscal points out the maximum loan under that program is small, only about $15,000 but that could make the difference for many small business owners. And they're also working on the application process as we speak. You can find out the latest at bigskyeda.org. Now, as for the SBA, once the language is set on the stimulus bill, they say their plan is to get this money out as fast as possible. And there's good news, all 50 states now are eligible for these disaster loans. So still more questions than answers, but help is on the way. The question is, can the help come fast enough to tide those businesses over until things can return to normal? Let's hope so. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Jay. And as with many websites, the SBA site has also been overwhelmed by requests from all across the country. The SBA says it is on it and is working feverishly to get it back up and running. Well, for the first time ever, the June primary will be an all mail in election here in Yellowstone County. Governor Steve Bullock sent a directive today giving Montana counties that option along with some extra rules. It allows counties the choice to conduct mail ballot elections and expand early voting for the June second primary. It also calls for social distancing at polling locations. Montana school districts will have more time to choose mail ballot elections. The school district's two elections on May 5th are already mail in. As for the primary, Yellowstone County Elections Administrator Brett Rutherford says he's already decided he will request an, a, a mail in election. We rely heavily on retired folks. And we're basically telling them not to go out in public at this point, and most people not to go out in public. So you'd have probably a shortage of election judges, so you'd have longer lines for the voters, and then you'd have to deal with all the equipment too, so you're constantly cleaning, wiping down pens and booths, so that would create even longer lines. Rutherford says mail-in ballots will go out at the same time as absentee ballots 25 days before the June 2nd primary. He's encouraging everyone to mail in the ballots at least one week before the elections rather than dropping them off at the elections office. Yellowstone County attorneys, judges and jail staff are working hard to whittle down a list of nonviolent inmates to release from the county jail. So far, about 70 inmates have walked out in response to a state Supreme Court order to help slow down the spread of COVID-19. But as Q2's Andrea Lutz reports, this task is not easy. And the current population of the Yellowstone County Detention Center, somewhere around 400 on this particular day. And we're told that's the lowest it's been since 2013. So I checked in with county leaders to see how they're gonna manage on getting that number even lower. What our goal is, is to not stop the process completely. Our goal is to bring in individual cases more often because our dockets are lighter right now. Judge Mary Jane Nicely is comfortable talking to me through video chat because the majority of her work lately has been telehearings. 
A recent order from the Montana Supreme Court asked judges to review jail rosters and release without bond as many prisoners as they can in an effort to reduce the spread of coronavirus. So Nisley says that's what Yellowstone County is trying to do. I did receive one case. And um, it was a request. And looking at the statute, we are going to have a hearing. Um, but I think that what the judges are concerned about is obviously violent offenders, unregistered offenders, people who have typically not shown up for court or probation. We reached out to Sheriff Mike Linder, too, who says those who are being released are being given a notice to appear in court at a later date. At the Yellowstone County Detention Center, inmates are typically in close quarters. And while there are no confirmed cases of the virus here, Supreme Court Chief Justice Mike McGrath fears it's just a matter of time. I think that judges try very hard to impose a sentence or a bond thoughtfully to begin with. If we have additional resources to monitor people, um, as the, they've asked the county for, that might be useful. And I know the sheriff is working hard on that. Meanwhile, all Yellowstone County judges are changing the way they do business, too, because of the virus. Moving civil cases, suspending jury trials, and only residing over essential criminal and abuse matters. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. And Sheriff Linder also tells Andrea that while his agency does not determine who will be released, he says his staff will be speaking up if they feel someone on the list is a threat to public safety. Well, the Unified Health Command is warning people not to use rapid at-home COVID-19 tests because they can give false results. The command states a person could be infected and the test can produce a false negative. Those rapid tests do not identify the presence of COVID-19, just antibodies to a virus. And they don't differentiate between COVID-19 and other strains of coronavirus. Health officials say the test should not be used as the sole basis to diagnose or exclude COVID-19 infection. The health command also states that residents should get tested at St. Vincent's Healthcare or Billings Clinic testing sites. The Unified Health Command also sending a reminder that only a licensed health care provider must order a test. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, John Deere dealers, best known for their farming equipment, currently playing a major role in the medical field, will explain plus a local business owner making sure that his employees can keep providing for their families even when they're not working. And coming up in sports, from rim-rocking dunks to sharpshooting, we dive into the Q2 archives and look back at the city's last pro basketball team. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger, Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire, and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.